Oh, what's up guys? So, we are on part two of the amateur bullet casting vlog and uh, we're actually going to start pouring our bullets now. So, uh, last video we made our ingots. These are 100% uh, clip-on wheel weights. Or as close as to 100% we're going to get. And uh, we made our ingots. Uh, we uh, quote-unquote purified them. Not purified them, but uh, flushed them off. And, uh, yeah, so now it's time we're actually pouring them out. Now, um, you can use the ladle method and, like, just scoop it out, but that's not really how um, really good casting is done. Uh, from everything I've seen, all the really good casters have a bottom pour pot. Um, so here's mine. This is uh, my little setup here. Nothing super fancy. I actually had this set up originally for making, um, making fishing weights like I mentioned last go around. Um, I didn't have my thermostat though. I was just melt, melting, uh, melting ingots in here and pulling them out for fishing waste. But this is the smallest lead bottom pour pot they make. I think this is like a 10 pound pot. Very, very small. Uh, most casters you see will be using the 20 pounder or one of the RCBS ones. But this is like the little baby one they sell for making fishing weights. So, but it'll work for what we're doing. I'm just going to have to uh, refill it a lot. But, um, Goes right into a 110 socket, none special. Uh, I have a thermometer. Now this is, I showed in the last video, this is a foundry thermometer. This is actually made for like uh, high temperature metal foundries. And what it is, and you know, see it would actually go into like the side of a pot or something, screw in, but with this I'm just going to kind of plop it in right here. Now the reason we want a thermometer is we want to be able to pour our lead at a consistent temperature and make sure it stays at a certain temperature. Certain lead should not be heated above a certain temperature because you start burning out various components. It'll make the lead softer or harder. So uh, that's why we kind of need the thermometer here to make sure we kind of keep stuff going on a uh, constant. So with this one, uh, with the, uh, with the uh, wheel weight uh, alloy we got here, I asked around on cast bullets, everybody was saying, for what they're doing, a lot of 30 cal guys, mainly they're they're saying keep around 725, 750. So um, I think 750 would be best for the uh, bullet we're using because I really need to pour in and uh, go good. So with that being said, let me tell you the uh, bullet I decided. Oh, excuse me. So... I did ask in the last video, um, out of my 30 cal or my 22 cal, which one I should do first. Didn't really get any comments on that. And just looking at my reloading supplies, I said, screw it. I am going to do the, um, I'm going to go the opposite route. Everybody says, uh, go with a 30 caliber bullet uh, or, a, you know, 40 caliber or 9 mil, something like that. A large bullet because it's easier. Um... I would if I actually had some primers. <laughs> I checked my little supply. I have maybe 400 uh, large rifle primers, and those are like half and half Winchester, Winchester, and um, um, and Federal. I really want to have some where when we test these loads, it's all across the board the same. I'll have a bunch of them. Um, so what I had a lot of as far as components and brass and whatever. I have a lot of CCI small rifle primers. I have a, I have a thousand of them. I haven't even touched. Uh, funny story. I bought them, saying, "Hey, um, I just, I just need a hundred, but the guy convinced me to buy a thousand, and they've just been collecting dust. So, um, we got a bunch of those. I got a crap load of two twenty three slash five five six brass. I mean, I literally have, I have probably close to two thousand uh, pieces of various range pickup." 223 and 556 five, brass and guys if I run out of either of those it's it's a bad bad time because I have a I have a stockpile of it. So with that being said, we are going to uh start casting 223 for the AR. <laughs> so uh as far as molds for this, we have two molds. Um the one I really like the look of so far since I have a one and seven twist AR barrel which really prefers the heavier bullets, the 60 to 70 grainers, um, up to like maybe a, some of the some target shooters use a 107 uh, grain uh, bullet. But uh, since it has that um, 
that faster twist rate. I was really thinking about using this. This is a mold I got from somebody. I was actually pretty lucky. Apparently, this is kind of a hard mold to get. This is the HM2 225 62 grain um, six cavity mold. And pretty cool mold there. Uh, got the Molon Abe, you know, come take it. Made in the USA. And it's uh, a, kind of a longer uh, semi flat nose bullet. Let's see if y'all can see that there. Really, really nice mold here. I got it off. A guy sold it to me, a really cool dude. Sold it to me for like, uh, it was like 30 bucks. Really cool dude. If you're watching this, thank you, man. I was thinking about using this one, but I realize a lot of other casters are probably going to be watching this, so maybe I should do something that everybody's going to be able to get. So the other one I have is the classic Lee. This is the uh, 225 diameter. 225 55 grain Lee mold and this is this is like the mold everybody tries to use for casting uh 223 and this is the one like almost it's either you're gonna love this mold or you're gonna hate it there's no in-betweens with this mold it's either it's the best thing since sliced bread or it is like Satan's big toe or something one or two so uh me already going down the road going down the road of the harder path I figured let's go ahead and use it, see what happens. So, uh, six cavity mold it has this really cool. Um, I'm not sure if this was factory or this was modified like this, but it has a kind of a sprue cutter here. So, you can just when you pour your lead, you can just do like that and you can use your hand. You don't have to beat it over. Uh, with this, a lot of molds you have to have like a little piece of like a hammer handle or something, you have to beat it over to uh, open it up but this one doesn't need that so we're going to be using that one and I gotta close my other one back here but uh this is an aluminum mold this is a used one too so and i've already cleaned it i've uh smoked it and what smoking is for y'all don't know um it's kind of one of those advice things for a new mold you're supposed to take a um a candle or a match and just let it go um light it and just let the soot form in the uh in the cavities and that just helps the uh bullets bullets um drop out once you uh pour them in so um that's that uh one more thing before we start casting well two more things um i'm going to be water dropping water quenching my bullets now um below me um Right down here, you can't see it, but right where I can kind of come over real easy, I have a little, like, two-gallon pail of just water, just regular water, and um, when I cast my bullet, once I cut the sprue, I'm going to drop my bullets in there. That's going to actually harden those uh, bullets up just a little more. Um, I've been reading, and apparently you can get up to an extra two to sometimes five BHN, uh, by water dropping and since I want to have kind of a harder lead alloy, which I'll explain later on why I want that um, I'm going to be water quenching. It also apparently helps your bullets kind of stay a little more uniform and um, weight retent some other stuff, but we're going to be water dropping them and um, As far as our lead here Some I want to show y'all this is empty right now. You're always supposed to leave a little bit of lead in the bottom of your pot because uh, when you Start it up again, it'll make it easier for it to get molten. Because these big ones like this, it's kind of hard for them to get started because they can't really fit all the way down in your pot. So um, that's why you always leave a little bit of lead. Uh, the Elias, though, last time I was really pouring with this, it was a uh, just a mix alloy for a fishing sinker. So I cleaned it out. And uh, now to get more lead in here, what I did is I ran re poured again, 100% uh, clip on wheel weights. These are like little half dollar ones. And these will fit all the way in my pot, all the way to the bottom. And these are going to melt easier. And that's going to give a good little starting pool for our big ones to go into. Uh, actually, let me, sh let me show you all what I mean here. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. You see, they go all the way in here. So, and I really need to rebuild this pot. But, because it does have, apparently that green stuff is from zinc contamination. But I try scraping most of it out, so I think we'll be good. 
You guys who know a lot about casting, is that going to screw up my bullets really bad? Do I really need to rebuild my pot or should I just get a new pot? Let me know. But yeah, um, so we're just going to plug this in. We're going to let these little suckers get molten. Then we're going to add some more in here. I'm not going to keep y'all watching. I might fast forward or something. I don't know. But uh, we're going to let all this get molten real good. Trying to get to 700 degrees. And we're going to try to keep it down. We're going to start pouring. So uh, plug her on in. plugged in and it has a dial on the back see if y'all can see that dial that goes it doesn't have a temperature it doesn't say 300 whatever it just goes from low to high and it's uh two through nine on the back side if we're pouring fishing weights i think where i want to be is right around the uh eight because set because seven's a little too a little too um liquidy it doesn't uh feel as good but nine is no, oh, no, seven is a little too cold, and by the time it hits, it actually starts to it fill up the mold. There's too many gaps and crevices. It doesn't work as well, and nine is just too hot, and it just takes too long. So, um, we're gonna try eight, see where eight takes us, and uh, I'll be back when this is all melted down or at temperature. Okay, so uh, we're about to flux this top off real quick. Um, y'all can probably hear I got my respirator back on. This respirator does an amazing job, guys. I'm telling you. Um, anyway, again, we're flexing off just like we did the other one. Since it's a smaller pot, I'm going to use just a little chunk of this, uh, paraffin wax. Oh, candle. Just want to kind of drop it off in there. And that's going to catch on fire pretty soon here. Get all this smoke out the way. There it goes. Put all that dripping off to the side here. And I'm just going to let that burn off again, same way we did with the uh, ingot. Again, this is supposed to uh, purify or bring any of the impurities that we didn't catch in the uh, ingots. And we did a pretty good job here, but there's still some impurities that could be in our ingots. Uh, it might be from the... Uh, Might be from like your uh, mold, might be some dirt to go on the ingot. Uh, this is just trying to catch anything before I actually get in the bullets. So, I'm going to let that kind of burn off. And uh, after that, we're going to put our mold on the top of our, uh, of our pot here. That's something I forgot to do. You need to let your mold get hot, uh, get the temperature with your lead. If your mold is too cold, your lead is going to cool down before it's able to form out and form out when you pour it in so you're not going to get good bullets. So uh, putting your uh, mold next to the fire or on top of your pot or on a warming pad is an extremely common practice and it is an extremely necessary practice. Again, from everything I've read, everything I've been told when it comes to uh, actually getting really good, consistent uh, bullets. So... This right here is just about done. Pretty sure y'all can see we sit we got a like a black layer. Apparently, that's our impurities. Or just alright. Now we're gonna put our thermometer back in and see if we're up to temp here. We are Yeah, we're past 800 degrees Fahrenheit, so uh, it's like we're at right at 850, 4, 850 400 Celsius. So uh, 450 Celsius, 850 Fahrenheit. So we are far above where we need. We're going to take all these little drippings off here. Toss it back in. They're on temperature. So now. I'm going to go ahead and put my mold on top, let it heat up. It's either that or I have my, uh, actually I have my propane burning right now, so I think I'm actually just going to put it on my propane real quick, because I got that kind of warming me up right now. So let's see if that works. So again, we're trying to heat up our mold here. This is an aluminum mold, so it gets kind of cold quick. 
So I figured I just kind of put it over my fire to kind of just heat it up pretty quick. This might be complete sacrilege, I'm not sure. I'm not trying to burn it or anything, I'm just trying to get it heated up here. At least get it started heating up so then I can put it back over my pot. A lot of people I've seen will instead, they'll just start pouring bullets until the bullets are coming out right. Uh, I would do that with my uh, fishing lead. I would just start pouring lead weights until they start forming out right and they got the temperature. I found that worked pretty well, but heating up your mold, quote unquote, is supposed to be the proper way to do it. Look at this. This is something I learned in welding. Uh, a lot of times before we weld on a piece of metal, we'll take a torch and heat it up to get the moisture out. And as you see right here, there's moisture coming out of this mold as we heat it. So That's a pretty cool thing to learn. I'm just going to try to heat this girl up. Open her up. Again, probably sacrilege. Um, you know. All right, again, amateur bullet casting blog, guys. Yep, pretty, pretty warm now. Warm to the cut, so now I'm going to put this on top of my pot for a little bit. And uh, let her finish heating up. All right, guys, so... We are running right at 900 degrees Fahrenheit on our lead. We got our mold heated up pretty good. Let's make our uh, first pour here. So a lot, some people do front to back with these multi ones. I do. Uh, I do back to front. I just find it a little easier. So I got a center up here. Okay, I'm gonna let all that kind of form on the top. Make sure it's nice and solid. Break her on open. And pop that off to the side. Now, looks like we're not filling out super well on some of these, but I'll probably I'll just throw these back in. Let's see what our first bullets look like. Now, we're starting to fill out pretty decent. Let me see here if I can get you. Filling out, uh, let's see if y'all can get that here. These are still kind of hot, so I can't quite show you. Now, what you don't want are wrinkles, and as you see, we don't really have any wrinkles here. So I like it filled the mold out pretty good. Make the bottom filled out half decent. Try to make sure y'all see. It's kind of hard to do this with these gloves on, but... Probably didn't uh, let it put enough lead on the top side. But, since it's not completely wrinkled up, that's showing that our lead is pretty good. See, this is what we don't want. See how that's wrinkled like that? That's not proper fill out. So that will cause that bullet to weigh slightly more or slightly less. So, uh, on the bright side, seems like we're doing pretty good. And I'm just going to start pouring in our water cup of these now, so let me uh, start pouring some more of these. Some people say if you swish it like that, it will help it feel out better. Okay, maybe I can open these up a little better. Oh yeah, look at those. Uh, see if y'all can see those. Uh, there you go. Those look pretty good. I'm just gonna drop those in the water. That was six. Temp is now at nine. Yep, nine fifty now. So we are way over the heat I was trying. But 
It looks like our lead is pouring really good. Tell me how the backs look to y'all. Looks like it's filling out extremely well. I'll just drop these in the water. I'm just going to keep going through these guys. I think y'all get the gist of what we're doing here. So, I've been casting for probably about, I don't know, half an hour. And I've been just trying to get the swing of it. I think I probably got close to, uh, I'll say about 150 in there. These are actually really small. A little layer of them in there. So, yeah. Um, that's what I got so far. All water quenched. I'm going to dry these out real quick. Got to run a plug and everything. You end up running an average of around eight to nine hundred degrees. That's just where the top wanted to run. It was filling out pretty good, so uh, that's what we ended up with. I'm gonna get these dried out. We're gonna look at them real quick, and uh, that'll be today's video. Okay, y'all. So this is what we got right here. I got them out the water. Got them uh, laid out here. Just looking at them, I think I need to work on my casting here, cause let's see if I can. Get one in focus here. I mean, oh, they look pretty decent. To me, they don't look like the worst. I got a couple in here that look kind of what's called frosted. Like right, they got these little. Let it focus in here. But they got little. Uh, see where it didn't quite fill out completely. I mean, they all look decent. But what do y'all think? So, let me know what y'all think about this. Um, next thing, we're probably going to sort through these and uh, and powder coat them. So, um, yeah. Hope you guys are enjoying this. And uh, if y'all got any tips or anything for me, just leave them in the comments there. So, I, I appreciate anything, guys. Uh, thanks for just following me along on this madness.